Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the very first installment of the cosmic weather forecast. And so let me break down what it is that I'm doing, why I'm doing it this way, blah, blah, blah. So the elephant in the room, I know the thing that all of you are wondering is going to be about tarot. The short answer is I'm bored. I am bored with tarot cards. I feel really constricted in terms of the messages that I can deliver to you since I'm limited by the storyline of tarot. And there's just a lot more nuances and different directions that I want to take this to support you and to deliver the best possible messaging. So I'm staying away from tarot for now. The only place that I'm going to be reading tarot at the moment is going to be in my newsletter, and the other area will be in my podcast that comes out on Wednesday. So if you listen to the PTA episodes, those are going to have a tarot reading, and I'm going to keep the tarot really, really minimal. The second piece of this is that I will not be doing sign-specific readings. Let's be honest, the bulk of my audience is Pisces, Scorpio, Virgo, Leo, and Libra. I think those are the top five signs in my audience. And I mean, come on, like doing 12 YouTube readings a month is, it's excessive. Okay, it's gratuitous. I don't want to do things by sign anymore. So what I have designed instead after taking this hiatus from really doing readings is I was thinking about why is it that people love readings so, so, so much? And I realized it has to do with this idea of it's a weather forecast. So what's really happening when I'm doing any type of divination reading is I'm giving you a forecast for, hey, this is what the energetic weather is going to look like over the next month. And the thing is, I can do this as a cold reading and not have any limits based on tarot. So that is what I'm going to be bringing to you every month. There's going to be one of these a month. My intention is to put them out on the first of every month. So my invitation to you is grab a notebook. I know a lot of you like to take notes on this. Understand that if you are energetically aligned with me, this is going to resonate with you. It doesn't matter if what kind of sun, moon, and rising you have. If you dig this, if you like this energetically, if you feel a resonant yes with me, then this will apply. So is there anything else that I want to mention? I have a lot of things coming up in January. I'm going to put links in the description box. So I have a new class that's coming out. There's a master class that's percolating that I'm going to be revealing more information about. If you want to stay up to date on all of that, I do recommend that you sign up for my newsletter if you're not already. Again, links will be in the description box. If you want to be in the next class, which right now it is a mystery offer, I'm going to be revealing details on that in the next mm, few days, I would imagine. So that is going to be coming up soon as well. And also, I still have spots available in my mastermind, Eden, if you would like to get in on that, if you want to go big in 2022, cultivate paradise within your own life. That is what we do in my mastermind. So if you are looking for community elevation, a curated group for manifestation, collective vision, all of the things to help supercharge your intentions. And let me add this as well. One of the things that is the most critical element of manifestation is consistently tapping into the correct energetics, correct as in aligned with your desire. So in my experience, holding space for people over the years, as well as being in containers myself, the advantage of mastermind containers is continually being able to tap into energy that you want to hold for an extended period of time. So when you're in the process of manifesting something, shifting your energetics around something, cultivating a new skill or 
um, aspect of your identity, which is a lot of what happens in manifestation or mastermind containers, any type of container where creation is the goal. It's very easy for the human aspect of self to really take over, which is when we start slipping and sliding all over the place. So if you are looking for a container to continually tap into, continue to hold your vision, continue to align to what it is that you want to create, this is the place to be. This has been by far the best and most fun container that I've ever created. And so it is a six month mastermind container with me. It's like you have me in your back pocket. What what could be better, honestly? So if you feel called to that, the link will be in the description box as well. As well. And we're going to be having our first call sometime in mid January. So once everyone's inside, then we'll pick a time and get started with that first call. So learn more about that. Go check out the link. Go apply if you feel the nudge. Okay, so over the past few weeks, I've really been feeling into what is happening in January. What do we have going on? What is, what are we going to be collectively experiencing? The first thing that I want to direct you to is my podcast episode on the fourth quarter That episode came out in September, but there's a lot of things that will actually apply to where you are right now. And even though, yes, we're technically in the first quarter, it's been interesting watching a lot of the residue of the holiday season get really kicked up right now. So what I'm talking about is if you personally have felt tired fatigued, (laughs) frustrated, super lit up by your family. I really personally feel that a lot of people underestimate how much something like a simple phone call can actually drain you. So unless you have a stellar relationship with your family and you love doing family functions and what you are coming down from is more of the busyness of the season, even if it's a good busy, like a full busy, then understand that that's still really hard on your body because a lot of energy is circulating through your system, which you might not normally be circulating. So it's just a different energetic output that you've had going on for the past few weeks. So understand that you might need some time to decompress, recharge, refuel yourself, get back into the groove of things. For others of you, if family is more complicated or difficult, then you can imagine having this situation where you've had to take phone calls, you've had to either accept or decline invitations. You've been around people who you may not have the best relationship with or you have a lot of um, turmoil in your relationship in the past. I mean, whatever is going on with all of that. It is very, very taxing on the system. And so this is something that has been coming up for me a lot lately. It's December 31st as I'm recording this. I feel like I haven't been in an energetic space to really create on a consistent and regular basis for weeks. I have just been wiped out completely. And it's been interesting because a lot of my clients have been dealing with this as well. A lot of my friends have been dealing with this. It is something that just comes with this time of year. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because of the pressure that the collective likes to put on itself in January. So instead of having an energetically balanced approach to January, a lot of the time they expect themselves to do a 180. Like, okay, January 1st is here. It's a fresh reset button. So therefore, we need to be 100% dialed in by January 1st. I want to remind you not to do that to yourself this year. Just don't do that. Don't do that. What I'm getting will be a much greater way to approach January this year in particular is to view this as just softly gaining momentum. 
if you go too hard too fast, the energetics that you're in right now are going to call you back. So you can go hard initially, but you're going to be called back to what you're resonant with right now. So instead, if you make subtle shifts, but you're really consistent and build off of the things that you're developing, it will be a true evolution. Trying to do something to the extreme initially isn't going to stick. This is about if you can imagine having to sculpt something, if you just hack a huge chunk of marble off, you're not actually shifting it into the shape that you want it to become. The opportunity for evolution has ceased because you have just gone too far too fast. So this is a matter of pace yourself, only stretch as far as you can consistently maintain. Let me say that again. Only stretch as far as you can go that can be maintained consistently and can be anchored into in a stable way. If you are approaching anything that is going to become unsustainable, I'm telling you right now, you're going to have to reevaluate come March. This is going to be a very heavy handed correction energetically. So you either get it consistent starting from the early stages, right? You either build momentum over time, right? Give yourself the first two months of this year to really build on the things that you want to create or go go hard, burn out, crash, and then you're going to have to start from scratch in March. So I'm just letting you know now so that you're not surprised. <laughs> so this is leading into the next energetic piece that I know is going to be come up coming up for a lot of people in January. It is going to be should city in January. Okay, January 2022, the mental body is going to have a lot of shoulds that are cooked up. You should do this. You shouldn't do that. You should quit this. You should start that. You should, 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 should. And the reason why this is dangerous, not literally, but it's just energetically, it's dangerous is too harsh of a word. It's energetically sloppy. It's energetically sloppy for you to operate from a mental body should because it's going to pull you away from your desire. So the best piece of insight that I can give you about this coming month is that you want to drop the shoulds and instead focus on what is the desire and then what you desire is going to inform the behavior that you want to implement or that you want to reduce, whatever the case may be for you. If you are pointing at a desire and then you are overlapping that with the devotion, this is something I've talked about a lot on my podcast, devotion is the secret sauce to goals, in my opinion. If you're devoted to something, this is much more stable and reliable than trying to motivate yourself through any means necessary or just through using brute force. I don't think that that's going to serve any of you well this month. So using these two components, you're really going to move a lot faster. If you're devoted to or you're, you're fixed on your desire, then you devote to it. You devote to the experience. You devote to going into that fully and completely. You will allow yourself to evolve in that direction. Your evolution is inevitable, but the more that you can concentrate on the desire, the more that you're going to sync up with that. So it's going to require less of the, the force and friction that a lot of people are used to. There's so much rhetoric around, you know, doing the difficult things and doing things that you don't want to do. But then the question becomes, if you're doing something that you don't want to do long enough, at what point do you abandon that behavior? If you don't want to do it, how long are you supposed to do something you don't want to do? Is there this imaginary idea that at one point you are going to want to do it? That might be true with 
some things in a very narrow context, but for a lot of the things that you are going to be desiring in January 2022 or for, for the entirety of the year, the superior way to approach it by far is going to be devotion to the desire. I cannot emphasize that enough. The next piece of this is understanding that the the should shoulds are always going to be coming from other people, society, cultures, basically anything that is far and away from your soul. So if there is a should tacked on to whatever you're wanting to do in terms of goal setting or starting something fresh in 2022, whatever, understand that should is a red flag. Anything that you're saying you should do this year, I would question it heavily. I would completely put it on a back burner and I would kind of start picking it apart. That's what I would do. The reason why this matters so much is because the should energy is going to steer you off course and it's going to be inauthentic and it's going to be misaligned inevitably, inevitably. Like there's no way around it. If it is not self-sourced and rooted in the desire of your personal soul, your personal evolution in this lifetime and incarnation, it won't stick. It'll be repelled off of you because it's a misaligned intention or a misaligned goal. Understand that having a point of focus moving into the future is crucial. Like, of course, there are going to be things that you want to move into. Of course, there are things that you want and things that you want to refine. That is good so long as it is coming from a point of desire within. If it's a should, if it's from this um, place of seeking external validation, it's just not going to hold over time and it's not going to result in a satisfying experience. What is going to be most important for all of you to have the the most success in all of this, to stay the most aligned over the course of 2022, but January is important for the initiation period. That's really how we as a collective treat the marker of a new year, is we're starting fresh, we're initiating, we're stepping into a new chapter. So obviously that is going to be present no matter who you are. There is this initiation current that is happening. And in order for this to serve you, I think from what I can see, the first two weeks of January, I would put all of your desires under a microscope. Pick them apart. Why do you want them and what is the root? What is the root? Doing things for satisfaction, doing things for pleasure, doing things because it's it's an aspect of yourself that you would like to see emerge. Those are all great reasons. But where you want to be careful is doing too much for the perception of others, doing things because you should, doing things that you don't necessarily desire, but you think that it's the quote-unquote responsible or right thing to do. So for example, if your desire is to be more conscientious with your money, and so you think that by applying a budget to your finances is the way to go, but by no means do you actually want to apply a budget, it makes you want to pull your teeth out. Like you would sooner pull your teeth out than make a budget. If you have that level of friction to the idea, then that's an indication that there's something funky in those energetics. And I would say, step away from the strategy that you've identified as getting you there. Conscientiousness around finances, being mindful with the energetic flow of money is a beautiful thing. By no means is that a problem. 
but it, this is more about how you do it is going to be what makes or breaks it. So this is why you want to really inspect what you're doing, why you're doing it. Go through these things with a fine tooth comb. Do not take the bait. There is going to be so much stuff that is shoved in your face in the month of January about all these things that people are starting and doing and initiating. What I am here to tell you is if you are not prepared, don't beat yourself up everything's going to be okay. This is going to be a year with a, an abundance of time. You're not falling behind. <laughs> okay, like I'm reminding you this because there are going to be a lot of illusions that come up that could potentially make you feel like you're falling behind. Not true. Not accurate, not correct. That is not the case. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. So the best thing that you can do for yourself is give yourself grace in the beginning of January. These next two weeks are crucial for setting yourself up for success. And if you try to go too hard, too fast, put yourself in a pressure cooker, that's not... It's not going to serve you long term. This is the month to look at the long game. The long game is what you actually want to invest in. And if you treat January with a lot of consciousness, and if you really allow yourself to feel into what is the purest desire of my heart and soul, and focus on what are things that you can gain momentum in January about and around, that is going to carry through the coming months. Let me see if there's anything else I want to say about that. Give yourself grace. Be mindful. Comb through your goals and your intentions. Ah, one more piece with this. Don't be afraid of unconventional approaches to your desire. This is something that I think is overlooked, in my opinion. I, I don't think that many people take this angle. But when it comes to goal setting, rather than actually taking an energetic approach, which is what I would suggest, a lot of people take a metric approach. Like, I need to hit this financial marker. Finances is a, is a good one. Let's say you have money goals, but maybe you don't have the best relationship with money. And maybe there is a certain dollar amount that you would like to see come in in any particular month. If that dollar amount doesn't feel good to you when you focus on it, look at the root of the energetics instead. So one thing that I honestly, honestly, I think a lot of you would benefit from is ditching the numbers, ditch the metrics that are too anchored in the 3D and focus on the emotional, the energetic, and dare I say, the nervous system goal. So money is a good one because a lot of people operate financially from a space of survival. So instead of looking at, I need X amount of dollars, that's all right. Your energy is already fucked. I'm just going to say it. It's already putting you into a state of need, putting you into a state of scarcity, putting you into survival. Now your nervous system is already dysregulated and you haven't even started. Not good. Not helpful. <laughs> so you can try it out, but if you don't get the results that you're looking for, at least you know why. What I would say instead is a, a um, a, well, I think it's better. It's a better financial goal, in my opinion, would be maintaining a relaxed nervous system as I spend, as I receive, as I circulate money. If you focus on nervous system regulation as it pertains to the flow of money, 
I mean, you're you're going to have a much easier relationship with money that is going to serve you way better than feeling crushed every time you don't hit a metric because then you're going to end up going backwards. You're going to have a lot of negative emotion around not doing good enough, not doing the way that you thought you would be. And it's actually going to be counterproductive. Instead, if you come from, I want to feel supported when I spend, I want to feel supported when I receive this check, I want to be balanced in my nervous system, that is going to hold for a long time. Can you receive with ease? Can you spend with ease? Can you spend with pleasure? Can you receive with pleasure? If you allow yourself to go into the feeling state around the goal, you are going to be a beast in 2022. I'm not joking. The same would go for, what's another example? Health. A lot of people approach the new year from, I have this regimen that I want to start. Okay, well, why are you doing the regimen to begin with? To have a hot body or to lose this weight because I'm not happy with my my appearance in this moment. You know, that's usually the root of it. So once again, the energetics are already fucked. Already, you haven't even started and there's still this approach of doing things from a space of not being good enough. That's how you know that it's funky and it's going to get you funky results no matter how many salads you eat. So instead, look at what is the feeling state that you're going for? Can you make this more of an energetic goal? Is it, I want to feel good in my experience in my body. I want to feel safe in my body. I want to speak kindly to my body. I want to listen and attune myself to the cues that my body is giving me, whether that be hunger, sleep, thirst. I want to be attuned to my body's communication with me. That's very different than you need to run five miles a day because you don't like the way you look. So understand that if you can apply the energetics to it instead, that it is going to make this experience so much faster, so much easier, so much more stable. And so I think that the paradigm of goal setting from 3D metrics should die. If I could kill it personally, I would because I think it actually holds a lot of people back. So see what happens when you start approaching your intentions for this upcoming year through the lens of energetics, feelings, a balanced nervous system, and just being optimal in your approach. One thing that you might find helpful is can you look back at maybe you did a process last year? What goals did you have for 2021? I just saw something that I wrote for the new year, the beginning of 2021, and immediately I was like, that changed, that changed, that changed. I don't even want that anymore. I don't want that anymore. That's completely changed. Oh, I exceeded that goal. And I would not be surprised if you have a lot of that as well, where the the North Star changes. Like it it's shifting all over the place. So you have to Understand that if you're digging your nails into something in the 3D, it could very easily shift. And then it's like, well, what are you aiming at? You want to choose things that can be consistently held and directed at throughout the course of the entire year. What I'm really inviting you to do here is look at things through a macro lens. The 3D stuff generally is micro. It's at one point in time, the goal will be achieved. So you get a quick hit if you just focus on, you know, a a certain number of money or a certain amount of money or one thing or one point in time. This is not as energetically stable as something that can mutate with you over time. So I I would say drop more of the boundaries 
and see what happens to your intention setting, to your goals, and how well you can hold them over the course of an entire year. Just see what happens. Try it out. Okay, so we went through the shoulds. We went through gaining momentum. Okay, so another another illusion that is going to be coming up for a lot of people this month is the illusion of intensity being able to overcompensate for consistency. It cannot be done. Again, you're going to have to be really careful. There are two messages in this. One is the illusion of intensity. The second is the comparison piece. A lot of people are going to be all over social media, sharing all the things that they're doing, the new things that they're starting. And my suggestion is to insulate yourself from these things as much as you possibly can. It's one thing if you use it as inspiration, but I doubt, I highly doubt that the majority of you are going to be able to effectively look at something with neutrality from a space of this inspires me. (laughs) that skill takes a lot of time to master. You know, it takes a lot of practice to master. Not time, but practice. So make sure that you are being careful with how much you're consuming of that stuff. And see how that goes, because the comparison piece is going to throw you off your game. Again, the comparison is actually what takes you away from the desires that you have for yourself. The authentic desires of your soul will be muffled by the stuff that other people are doing. And my my hope is that you make what other people are doing completely irrelevant in January. Don't look. Don't focus on it. You need to purify the intentions that you have going on and the energetic alignment as well as the actions that you're taking, the practices that you initiate this month, you want to come from a pure aligned space so that they're true to you, so that the authenticity piece is serving you. Comparison is going to throw you off. So understand that there's a lot of things that can work and do work and everyone can have a different process for how they get to a certain destination. Copycat, one-size-fits-all approaches aren't it. You're in a unique soul with a unique process and a unique approach to your unique desire. So allow it to be very custom. Let your goals be custom. Let your intentions, all of the things that you're initiating, let them all be tailored to you and see how this how this pans out. Now, the thing that is going to irritate me the most, (laughs) I would say just the reason why I'm going to have to insulate so much is because there's going to be a lot of people who are meeting things with a great deal of intensity that they're not energetically prepared for. So let me let me explain. There are going to be some people who are very interested in fitness who compete in athletic competitions and therefore they train like it. They train like they've been in athletic competitions for the past 10, 15 years because they have. And so what is energetically resonant for them to start off with in January is going to be completely different from someone who's in a different starting place. So there is going to be, this is why you have to be mindful with comparison. If you're seeing a 60 second clip of something out in the ether, you know, you want to be careful because you don't have the full scope. Then you're going to have people who, you know, perhaps they document for accountability reasons or whatever, who are going to be sharing a very high intensity unsustainable approach that they're taking to January. Again, they they won't they might not get the hint until February or March. So there's going to be a lag. There's going to be a lot of like start off burning bright and then it's just going to die out really fast. So this is going to be 
it's going to be really, really clear what isn't sustainable within, I, I would say, six weeks. You'll be able to tell if it's sustainable or not. And so this is why taking the first two weeks of this month is going to be of great service to you. It just is. It is going to make your life so much easier if you can dial it back, you know, hold yourself where you are, regardless of pressure that is existing externally. Just make sure that you are prioritizing consistency and sustainability over intensity as much as you possibly can. Because something that you can fully get your energetics behind is the step that is going to feel the best to you. And it's something that you can practice the most and get the most bang for your buck. You cannot you cannot, you cannot, you cannot overcompensate consistency for intensity. It just will not hold over time. And so once again, this is, January is simply an opportunity to set yourself up for success for the year. Think about January as setting the tone for what you are aiming at. There's going to be some of you who don't listen to this at all. You set a whole bunch of 3D metrics and then come April, you've abandoned them. They're not going to hold. You're going to be aiming at something completely different. Maybe you already exceed them and the goal then becomes irrelevant a few months in. There are so many different ways that this is going to shake out. So this is why this month is going to be crucial for how you approach the rest of the year. Th this is not going to make or break your year. This is just an opportunity that you can capitalize on or not. The thing that people are going to overlook is the efficiency component. So you know me, I'm all about efficiency. I want things to be the most efficient and the fastest as I can possibly get them. Like optimization is the name of the game for me. So if I can slow down to speed up, I'm going to, because I know that in the macro, in the long term, that is actually going to be of higher service to whatever it is that I'm trying to do. So the thing that people are going to be prioritizing is speed. They think that rushing is going to deliver what they want. It's not. It's not. Rushing and being energetically sloppy is going to result in you needing to restart this. So then the momentum that you build in January is not going to exist in February. You're going to come to a screeching halt by March, as I said. February is that interim where a lot of things can happen, but definitely by March, it's going to be clear where you're at. So you really do have two options. You come from the efficient, stable angle where you're generating momentum, you're staying in alignment with what your soul is asking you to do because that's where the most consistency is going to come from. And you allow yourself to evolve into what you're prepared for and ready for energetically. So you get to decide you either start in January and allow the momentum to carry you into February, March, April, May. And this can go in the direction of you keep building. You keep building throughout the entire year. It just picks up steam. It snowballs in all of the right ways. And that is something that you have the opportunity to do if you properly pace yourself in January. If you don't, if you do not take this advice, what is going to happen is you will crash. Then you're going to have to start again. You're going to have that crash period, that downswing, and then you're going to have to build back up again. And if you go too far, you're going to crash again. So the thing is, your energetic state, if you're doing this in an unconscious, in a rushed way, in a way that's misaligned, that is going to make itself evident. It would not be good for you to, I don't want to say rewarded, 
I don't want to say rewarded. What is the better word? Let's say you rushed, you were operating from shoulds, you were burning yourself out, you were energetically sloppy, and let's just say you met all of your goals, your wishes, your hopes, your dreams, everything came true from an energetically sloppy state. That would then give you the impression that you should stay energetically sloppy because it gets you to where you want to go. And then you get to the goal and then you've gone nowhere fast because satisfaction and energetics weren't prioritized. And then you start all over again. So this is why January is crucial. It's not because it's a make or break month. It's more that if you're intentional this month, if you're focused, if you're clear, if you stay in your alignment, prioritize alignment in order to sort out what you initiate in January. It has to feel authentic and right for you. It has to be something that actually is coming from a place of desire and is anchored in your personal development. Not like there's things to fix, but I mean, it, it has to be pointing you in a direction that you actually desire to go in this lifetime. If it's, if it's for any other reason, it's going to bottom out. Okay, one more piece wants to come through about January. Allow yourself to experiment in January. So the, the thing that people will get trapped in. So don't allow yourself to do this. Make a note of this. If something doesn't work in January, nip it. Catch it immediately. Pivot immediately. Don't waste time. Don't try to force a square peg through a round hole. This is not the time to do it. If you are going to catch a problem, catch it this month. If you try something and it doesn't work, good. The sooner you catch it, the better. This is why the should element is so important. There are going, you're going to see people around you who are operating from shoulds. Then it's not going to work out and they're going to start floundering and they're going to end up squandering time. If you are to capitalize on the time that you have. Now, again, stay in abundance consciousness around time. You can actually have a greater impact in the same month, right? We all have the same amount of hours and we all have the same number of days. But how we move through the month is going to be very different. So if you spend time being hard on yourself, beating yourself up, being frustrated with yourself and getting all tangled up in something not working, that is not serving you. It's not helping you. It's not going to carry the momentum. Instead, see it as, thank God this revealed itself. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for showing me that. Ditch it. Start again. If you use January as more of an experimentation period, oh man, February is going to be even better. Because remember, this is about momentum. This is about how much momentum you can build on and sustain over time. And don't, don't bite off more than you can chew this month because understand that you will stack things over time. You don't have to have everything figured out in January, but you do want to start on an aligned foot. You do want to start in an aligned position. If something isn't aligned, ask for it to reveal itself to you ASAP. Like, just help me feel into if this is right for me or not, and trust the feedback that you're getting from whatever results. Results as in not 3D stuff, but how do you feel about what you're doing? Is it something that you do want to continue? Is this something that is going to be calling you? regularly. So that would be the last piece is don't be afraid of the experimentation. If you're trying something new, try it out and see how it goes. If you go listen to the fourth quarter podcast episode, you know that I talk about using November and December as your experimentation months. Do it when it's hard. Initiate when it's difficult. If you didn't do that, if you didn't do any experimentation to see how it would go in November and December, that's okay. Take January. 
Take January to work out the bugs so that you can have that smooth foundation, that stable foundation that then you are building on in February, March, April, and it's going to make this a lot easier and more satisfying for you. So my loves, that is what I have for you today or this month. Don't forget, if you want more, I will be back with more podcasts. And for those of you who like more video style content like this, it will be coming. I just have a lot of audio content, and so it is a lot to delegate to my editor right off the bat. But I do plan for all of my podcasts to be in this style as well as all of the audios as regular. So that will be coming soon as well. And I hope you have a fantastic January. I'm in full agreement for everything you desire. So much more and an abundance of clarity and ease coming for you in January. So happy goal setting. Make sure that you drop your intentions, goals, dreams, desires, whatever you have in the comment section, and I will be in agreement for them as I browse through them. Don't forget, Eden, we start mid-January. I have another class coming up soon. There's a master class percolating. Stay up to date. Get on my newsletter, and I will see you all next time. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.